this is a good feeling just to come here and be able to tell my story yep. and you know just express myself i'm not very good at opening up so we'll see how this goes you recently jumped into the fitness industry yeah. and i kind of wanted to talk about that because I, I see what you're doing um i, I love what you're doing I, I love that you are incorporating uh this new age mindset when it comes to fitness early on in my childhood my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer mm -hmm. so this kind of determined and changed the way we would eat we always would try to have like balanced diet we would try to eat whole foods so I always knew how to eat and how to take care of my body, but that's not to say like I always did it or made the healthier choice. Mm -hmm. so I was just trying to find myself and figure out what it is I'm capable of mm -hmm. and just retrain my mind to see that, like if you put in the work, you build the confidence. Every guy like, you know, wants to look good physically right yeah, take their yeah. shirt off in the summertime yeah uh, you know did that have any effect on your decision to, to want to be fit want to be healthy um i would say i ask I, you uh, know uh, no, uh, I, let me ask the question right yeah was girls the motivator so untamed for me is just it means like non-domesticated wild free mm -hmm. which all of us are when we're born mm -hmm. and i just want people to realize that you don't have to follow traditional um, methods to become fit. Mm -hmm. You're already fit. Mm -hmm. You just have to embrace what God has given you. All right, welcome. Welcome to the new episode of the Miles High Podcast. This is Miles Jr. I'm the host. And as always, the vision and goal of this podcast is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right? So I got a, I got a guest on the pod today. Uh, wanted to do uh, another pod. I know I've done some, some pods on uh, fitness and health before. Uh, but I wanted to get a different perspective. Um, good friend of mine, uh, quite some time. He's a, a fitness trainer. Has been has been fit most of his life, for, for what I know. But has gotten serious about it over the years. Uh, and I wanted to have a conversation with him about new age fitness. So I want to welcome to the pod, Mr. Kale Fox. Let's clap clap him up, guys. Welcome, welcome, Kale. Uh, I call you Kale, right? That's yeah, for sure. For not, sure. Not, not, not Sly. I mean, whatever you prefer. All right, Kale, yeah. aka Sly. Yeah. AKA, any AKs? No, that's about it. <laughs> Sly, Sly Fox. All right. Well, yeah. welcome to the pod, bro. First of all, thank, thank you for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I just want to say I really appreciate you bringing me on this platform. Mm -hmm. I've known you for some time now, from when I was a kid, actually. Um, I was honored to be mentored by your father every Sunday at church. So, this is a good feeling just to come here and be able to tell my story yep. and you know just express myself i'm not very good at opening up so we'll see how this goes this will be a first time for me so i'm looking forward to see where we can take this conversation nah cool 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 so i want you to relax right yeah i want you to just be just having a conversation i guess like 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 don't even pretend like no one else in this room it's just right. me and you cool, cool. shooting the breeze yeah um so like like you said right we uh he, we went to church together, right? He was a part of uh, my dad's church, his parents. Uh, my parents know each other well. Uh, me and his brother actually graduated high school together. Um, so, you know, our connection goes, goes way back. Um, but you recently jumped into the fitness industry. Yeah. And I kind of wanted to talk about that because I, I see what you're doing. Um, I, I love what you're doing. I, I love that you are incorporating uh, this new age mindset when it comes to fitness. Yeah. And I, I think that's something that is needed, you know, and something that is, is unique. And I think you're doing a good job uh, with your your clients and, you know, building your brand. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't want to have that conversation, but first let's, let's talk about your background, right? So let's, let's talk about your, you know, early education, um, college education, and then let's talk about how you got into, uh, how you got into fitness. All right, um, so starting out, I'd like to say I was very health conscious from a young age. Mm -hmm. um, this was due to just going really kind of deep 
into just a little perspective on how I became so into is about like getting my body right, just eating correctly and just having a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. um, early on in my childhood, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So this kind of determined and changed the way we would eat. Mm -hmm the food we would have in the house. We didn't grow up really eating like Kool-Aid and chips and snacks and candies and things like that. So that kind of, we always would try to have like balanced diet. We would try to eat whole foods. So I always knew how to eat and how to take care of my body, but that's not to say like I always did it or made the healthier choice. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still human. I still have addictions and yeah. still- We indulge. Yeah. yeah. So, so for the most part, I always had an idea and then just growing up, I was always sick as a kid. So I always, my parents always tried to steer me in the right direction. I was asthmatic when I was born. Mm -hmm. So certain things would trigger my asthma. I wouldn't be able to like indulge in dairy products. And most people don't know that about me. So a lot of times before I would even go to school, I'd have to be on like, I think it's called a nebulizer. Mm -hmm. So I'd have that and I'd have to take like my asthma pump with me, even throughout sports. It was very like, I wouldn't say, it, it was very, it, it crushed my ego a little bit mm -hmm. because I would always feel like I had to carry my inhaler with me just before anything, basketball practice, basketball games. So it was like, that always made me feel like my body wasn't strong. So mm -hmm. that psychologically mm -hmm. took a toll on That's me right, growing up. So, yep, yep. you know, so just to fast forward, um, I, um, I made it a point in my life to like get stronger, to take my, my health into control and just uh, make better choices with my, for myself. Mm -hmm. Although I um, graduated high school, uh, I didn't go right off to college. So I worked for a while um, at BC, if you didn't know, with mm -hmm. my mom. Mm -hmm. So, so um, just basically uh, took like my life into my own hands. Mm -hmm. That's just like a, just going back further back into my story mm -hmm. but um for the most part i um i got into fitness i would say when i went off into when i went to college i always dreamt so, of playing so got into yeah. fitness as far as like you you know developed a, a gym regimen or fitness in the sense of um like, so like just touching back on the earlier years mm -hmm playing basketball I always wanted to play collegiate sports I never got the opportunity to because mm -hmm. like I said I always felt like I I didn't put in the work or enough work to get to that level mm -hmm. so when I finally went off to school just for my education I made it a point to see like what I was capable of mm -hmm. so I would like wake up every morning go in the gym um, do basketball drills I would meet new people I would try to join leagues. I was just trying to find myself and figure out what it is I'm capable of mm -hmm. and just retrain my mind to see that, like if you put in the work, you build the confidence. Mm -hmm. So that was, my, that was my mindset on that. And I would wake up every day, go to the rec center. I would just take my basketball, just put in work. Um, people could tell, they saw it on my Instagram. They was asking me like what I was training for yep. and Actually, I, didn't, I had no clue that that discipline and waking up every day would lead me to what you're doing now. To what I'm doing now. No, nah, that's crazy, right? Because a lot of the times on this pod, like I, I, I talk about, and I have guests to talk about, like you know, they're in a certain phase in their lives, and they're doing this thing that doesn't make sense to them at the time, or they're doing it for an entirely different reason. But in fact, like that, that practice that they're doing, or that discipline that they're doing. It's actually working towards like something they're entering into into in in their future, um, and that happens a lot in, in life, right? We we see that play out in our lives, and I think that's that's what that was for you, right? So when you're going through that phase of of training, uh, you know, going through these drills in, in basketball, and trying to make make sense of like you know the passion that you had and the the, the desire that you had had to you know want to play, yeah. And when that didn't come to fruition, what like when did the switch happen to say, all right, you know, I didn't make it in, in this lane, but you know, I can, I could pivot and, and maybe do something as far as uh, becoming a trainer or, or did it, did it just come with, you know, I, I won't work out and, well, let me ask you this first uh -huh. before we, before we get to the, to the formal stuff. Yeah. So it's part of it. Cause I know every, every, every guy like, you know, wants to 
look good physically, right? Yeah, Take their yeah. shirt off in the summertime. Yes. Uh, you know, did that have any effect on your decision to, to want to be fit, want to be healthy? Um, I would say, I ask, like, you know, uh, uh, no, uh, let me ask the question, right? Yeah. Was girls the motivator? for for this the, the the fitness I wouldn't say it was mindset. the motivator but it was just I was a skinny kid mm -hmm. so like I said for me I never felt confident I always felt weak basketball is a physical sport mm -hmm. and I didn't feel confident competing with people that were bigger and stronger than mm -hmm. me so instead of just running from it and complaining I was like I have to do something about it because yep. like my, my best friend at the time was very physical and like very athletic mm -hmm. and strong mm -hmm. And he would always tease me about it. He'd call me skinny fat. You know, you go into puberty, he'd be like, you have breasts. Like, you're too skinny to have breasts and all that. So, like, it was a lot of... The kids grew up. Like. That's what it was. So, it was a, it was a lot of, um, of my own thoughts and my own motivation mm -hmm. that got me in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, isolation, just trying to figure out who you are when you go off to school and you don't have friends. And you can be popular when you're in your hometown. But once you go to this, like, you're starting over from zero. Sure. So you're eating lunch by yourself. No one knows you. No one knows your history. You don't have any friends. Mm -hmm. So I feel like just to go back to the point I'm saying of just the messages I received on Sundays, mm -hmm. I just started to develop myself. Self-development was key. I was like, if I work on myself and I treat myself in a certain way, mm -hmm. people would then treat me a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I can build the confidence and demand a certain... Um, attitude that I would want from people mm -hmm. if I put off put out the attitude first mm -hmm. so the gym just builds confidence it makes you feel good about yourself mm -hmm. um, you get nothing back that you don't put in absolutely so it takes a lot of sacrifice a lot of discipline so that was really the turning point for me of course it played aesthetics played a major role in it that you want to look good mm -hmm. and like I said I was very small at the time so yeah, that was a driving force. So, you know, so you uh, was wanted to be healthy. You know, wasn't confident in in yourself. Yeah, in like what you were trying to do in sports, and you know, you wanted you wanted to build your physique mm -hmm. to where you uh, where you thought it needed to be. Um, mm -hmm. And then that transition into into becoming uh, a, a trainer, a fitness trainer. How like talk me through that. Because uh, I, I know you had you you did some little odd jobs here and there, yeah. um, but you know you I think once this once once fit once the trainer or you know this mindset of I, I'm going to chase this you know once you grab once you held on to that like I I I saw the change right yeah. I saw the yeah. dedication I yeah. saw the work you put in yeah. uh, and it was inspirational bro yeah. so I I want let's let's talk Thanks. about that transition all right so um basically I came back home in 2018 like the end of 2018 mm -hmm. i was studying graphic design mm -hmm. um got my uh what do you call it Bachelor's. technical oh. technical certificate mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. a technical school mm -hmm. so i came home in 2018 i was trying to find a job within the field that i studied mm -hmm. it was very it was hard finding a job in that in that arena because here graphic design at the time was very it wasn't as common and yep. social media wasn't as rampant as it is now so yep. Yep. They would just want you in the office, just doing flyers. Pushing papers. Yeah, just pushing papers, putting logos on letterheads and things like that. So it wasn't fun for me, and I never felt like I could sit in the office for more than an hour. Mm -hmm. I always felt trapped, felt like I had to get up and move. So ironically, I heard about this new facility that was open, and that was Market 360. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, man, I'd love to work there. Remind me of the gyms that I was going to in the States mm -hmm. when I was in college. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'd love to work there. I went there. There weren't any jobs available at the time. And the only job they had available was a custodian job. Mm -hmm. So I always believed that this was me already building my confidence yep. and being more secure with myself. I was like, once they let me in the door, I could find my way Figure it out. Yep. to the top. Mm -hmm. So they let me in to become a custodian that last maybe a week they saw some potential and good qualities in me i then transitioned to a front desk mm -hmm. where i strived a lot i was very good with guests i was very personable because in my earlier years i worked at body zone fitness out of high school and so it was like the same familiar faces i would see so i felt right at home and i could call people by their first name mm -hmm. and like people respond to me in a 
a very good minor. So it was like a great atmosphere for the gym. It was a great atmosphere for me. And fast forward, the owner, Jimmy Mackey, was just like, man, what's your plan for this? And I told him, well, from when I was in school, I wanted to be a, a basketball trainer. Mm-hmm. So that was my initial dream of, you know, teaching skill, to, skill development to people and like working out as a basketball trainer. So that quickly became reality without having any credentials or collegiate attributes. Mm-hmm. It's very tough to like grasp people interest or like make them gravitate to you to, to for for like that type of knowledge yep. that they're saying like hey you weren't a player or you didn't play basketball yep, yep. you know so I quickly pivoted to something else and he was like man I could show you how to become a trainer and he introduced me to uh NASM the National Academy Academy of Sports Medicine mm-hmm. so he showed me that hey if you become a trainer I'll show you like I'll, I'll put you in the in the position to to you know get your feet wet and start seeing what it's all about. Yep. So I can remember days I would be there at the front desk. I'm reading, studying. I'm answering the phones. I'm talking to people. I'm mixing shakes. I'm clearing the floor. To to later on realizing that I took the test, passed it, mm-hmm. and I just made a leap to become a trainer full time. Mm-hmm. Um, from there. I was there about two years, just started training. Maybe that first year I started training, that was like the year we experienced COVID. Mm -hmm. So right from there, as quick as the rise came, as quick as the fall came. Mm -hmm. So I was now home trying to figure it all out. Um, I remember doing Zoom calls in my parents' living room, clearing out the whole living room, doing Zoom workouts. Virtual training, yep, yep. So that was was very popular at the time. um, Then we were able to get, I think we had like a little window where we were let out and I would grab some equipment whatever I could find and I would take them to people's homes and like work out with them body weight two kettlebells a medicine ball and just from there I just kind of build up a community of people and I was able to have my own um, clientele Mm -hmm. without depending on the gym's clientele Mm -hmm. so when COVID was over um I was faced with a decision to make that was either I'm going to train through the gym or I'm going to train on my own. Mm -hmm. So I then took some time off. I already built these relationships with these people. So I was like, I don't think I can just cancel them. They were with me through COVID. They were with me through my lowest when I was confused about what I was going to do, when I felt like training wasn't going to be the thing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I took a chance and... I went to Evolve, which is no longer um, up and running. Yep. But I went there and I spoke with the owner and I was able to uh, negotiate an agreement where I rent the space and I just bring my clients there mm-hmm. and I pay a flat rate. And that worked out perfectly for me. So that gave me a year to see like, hey, what I was made of mm-hmm. and business was great. Mm-hmm. I was able to um, sustain myself. I was able to move out, able to rent an apartment. Um, so that was just a, like a reassuring point to me that this fitness thing can it's, happen. It's real, you know? yeah. And you was able to create a life for yourself. Yes. Okay, cool, cool. So <clears throat> you went you went from there to... Yeah, so, go, so huh? from Evolve, um, I was just like, I feel like I can do much more. So I um, lowered my pride. I went back. <laughs> went back to MacFit. And Fit. yeah, I went back and reached out to <laughs> MacFit and I was like, man... It was never any bad blood. It was always like, it was always, they were always open to me. They were always like, they always believed in me. Mm -hmm. They always saw my potential. They always told me that. They always reassured me that they know I'll do great things. Mm -hmm. So I went back to them and I was like, man, I just feel like I'm in a position where if I know I could deliver more, I could sustain myself and mark that to this day is still the monopoly. It's very much, um, one of the best facilities we have on the island, if not the best. Probably the best, So Mm -hmm. I can admit that. So I went back and I sat with the owners and I was able to tell them like, hey, this is my proposal. How about I pay the gym and I bet on myself that I'll have the clientele to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. So currently I'm there and I just pay, I'm not gonna disclose figures, no, but I, I pay. Numbers, yeah. I pay an amount to the gym, yeah. and they trust me enough. They know I keep the standard. 
They know that I'm personable with everyone. They know that they don't have to worry about me. I'll make sure everything's good. I'll help people even if it's not my clients. Mm -hmm. If anyone asks me any questions, I'm dapping up everyone. I'm hailing everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm monolith to everyone. So that was that was one of the real turning points in understanding that this fitness is more than just abs and a good chest. It's more of a it's a it's a business. Mm -hmm. Like you have to understand it's a business. Many people that feel that they work out so they can show people how to work out. Yeah. But that's only one aspect of yep, this business. Yep, yep. You know? Mm -hmm. So your your pivot going back to MacFit has has you know, garnered you uh, opportunity to uh, uh, create a, a, a good life for yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you, you're, you, you ventured into your own, your yeah. own. Uh, so your with own that, label. with that, when I came, when I spoke to to the management, mm -hmm. I was under the impression that I would kind of have to somewhat uh, represent their brand. Right. And they were like, "No, man." They're like, "You build this thing, be yourself." I, I even offered to wear a shirt just to like, you know, keep the peace and mm -hmm. make it seem like we're one cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. So there's like, no man, do your thing, wear your clothes, do, wear your shirt, wear your, your, your own company, you know? So from there I was able to just make some money to where as I was like, what is my next step? Mm -hmm. Because it's a difference between having a high paying job and owning a business. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I'm not physically training people, how would I make money? Mm -hmm. If I if I wanted to do vacation, if I was to have a kid now, like things like that was on my mind. So I just took a chance. I got some insight on some equipment that was being sold, and I just took a chance. Went into my pocket. Um, my wife helped me. It wasn't no investor. It wasn't no um, no one to help. It was just us taking a risk, mm -hmm. and so we just bought some equipment. And we negotiated with a space and we just filled in that space. And now I'm in phase one of Untamed Studios. Untamed. So I'm just trying to to um, get it all going and see where it's going because it happened so fast. Like yep. that's the thing with manifestation and yep. believing in yourself. It could happen. It might seem like it happens overnight, but you've been putting in the work for years. For years. Yep. But yep. the thing is, once it's here, you have to be ready for it. Mm. So I'm still embracing it. I'm still um trying to fathom that everything i was thinking about on those days just training waking up early going to the rec center by myself mm -hmm. um working out with some pro guys who were very nice to me who i met during my college career mm -hmm. so they kind of instilled in me this hard work and this mentality that you know everything is possible just mm -hmm. from me being able to hang with them and play with them and train with them mm -hmm lift with them and I saw the, the confidence I always knew was in me, but I had to find it. Mm -hmm. So just through working out with them and, and kind of keeping up was like reassuring that what I always knew was I was capable of of um, playing this sport at a certain level if I put in the work. Sure. So now I was just figuring out what it, where I want to take this, sure. you know, so. So where did, where did the name Untamed come from? So untamed for me is just, it means like non-domesticated, wild, free, mm -hmm. which all of us are when we're born. Like everyone runs, jumps, moves run as a kid. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line with life and responsibilities and kids and trials and tribulations, we forget that. Mm -hmm. And I just want people to realize that you don't have to follow traditional um, methods to become fit. Mm -hmm. You're already fit. Mm -hmm. You just have to embrace what God has given you. Like everyone can run, mm -hmm. everyone can jump, everyone can walk, mm -hmm. everyone can move their arms within reason. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you're not disabled, I understand. Mm -hmm. But we can hone into like untamed is basically thinking outside a box. Sure. So it's not one way to get fit. You don't have to um, work out for five hours, have a boring diet. Um, only drink water, you can't enjoy yourself, you can't go out, you can't have friends, you just must be this disciplined uh rigid person. Psycho. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, I you know, this this why I want I, this why I like would like would have liked to have this conversation with you because like I said, I see what you I see what you're doing. I've seen your growth. I've seen what um where, I've seen where you started and where you are now. 
and then I see the 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 type of training that you do, the type of encouragement that you do, the type of challenges that you do. I'll tell you one thing. One thing I don't like about most trainers is like most trainers who train, they train most of the, I mean, let me not, let me just generalize it. Some trainers yes, uh, who train, uh-huh. right? The people that they train, they're training them harder than they train themselves. Yes. That's how I feel, right? Yes. I feel like sometimes the, the workouts I see these trainers have people doing, and they, these people is be dying. I just be like, bro, if you do this workout, like you probably ain't gonna be able to finish this or do what you ask in this person to do, right? But I commend you, and I, I, I love what you do because you're always, or for the most part, you're working out with your clients, yes. or you do the workouts that your clients do. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you, you, know, you do your workouts on your own, obviously, yeah. and I see the same intensity that you work out with I see your clients working out with. And I, I like trainers like you. Not saying that, you know, all trainers don't yeah, do that. I but I like trainers that show that. Like show me that what you're what you're telling me to do, you you have already tried, you've already tested, and you've yeah. already proven. Right. And and I feel like that that mindset, that mentality when it comes to, to training it in and of itself is a, is a marketing tool, yes. right? For you to yes. show and be like, hey, this is what I could do, or this is what I do. This is the results that I get. Allow me to do the same for you. And, and I think that that helps in uh, building credibility, helps mm-hmm. in building confidence in your clients or building your clients. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, evolving into being able to start your own brand and, and you know, open your own gym. And, and who knows where the heights goes from here, bro. Yeah. You know, and just to piggyback of what you're saying. So like, like you say, some trainers might have clients, their clients or uh, their class or whatever it is, mm-hmm. the way they train, they might have them do something that they wouldn't often do. I would just tell those people sometimes stop. I like when my trainers, I mean, when my clients check me and they say, why am I doing this? So I would like, I would challenge everyone to ask their instructor or the person that trains them, what is this for? What Mm -hmm. is the reason behind this? Mm -hmm. And how is this beneficial to me? Not saying that there aren't benefits to um, high intensity workouts Mm -hmm. and burning calories, but sometimes ask, why do I have to do 10 burpees and then a backflip and then walk on my toes. I just say, hey, come do this with, come do the set with me. Let me exactly. just make sure you can do what you ask me so to. So all, all <laughs> things, if you enjoy these things, don't get me wrong, if you enjoy these things, by any means do it. Yeah. But there are just some foundational things that I feel like every trainer should instill in their clients. Mm-hmm. So I feel like the gym is for your weakness, not your strengths. And I notice a lot of people come in there and do what they enjoy mm-hmm. and do and really not focus and does, does not focus on the things that they suck at, right. which in my opinion, that's what the gym is for. So if you have weak legs, you shouldn't come in the gym every day and bench press. <laughs> if you have one side of your body, if you have muscle imbalances, you should come in that gym and focus on that. If you, if you have horrible flexibility and mobility, you should focus on full range of motion. You mm-hmm. should focus on the things you're not good at, and that will make you a better individual versus just coming in there and be like, man, I don't like to run. I'm not going on a treadmill. I don't like to do legs. I'm not even going in that section mm-hmm. because now that's just building. That's just pushing you further into your comfort zone. Sure, sure. I, I like that. So I, I could get to that because that's where you know I want to have that conversation where as far as like your approach to fitness. Yeah. And you know your holistic view of working more on your weaknesses than your strengths. Right. Yeah. I think that's a good approach. But first, I want to get into. Uh, your personal life a bit, right? So you mentioned uh, your wife yes. uh, recently got married. Yes, yes. Uh, earlier this year, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, and you don't, you didn't only get married, but you also went into business with your your wife. So yeah. you and your wife are uh, owners of Untamed Fitness together. Yes, it's Untamed Fitness. Right? Yeah, Untamed yeah. Fitness. Um, so how is that? How is that working with uh, with your wife uh, on a day to day basis? Uh, basically seeing her, you know, 24 seven, you know, I, I kind of, I, I have, I do the same thing. So yeah, I, I yeah, can relate. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I know for me at first it was challenging because we had to figure out like how to work with each other. Yeah. So how, how is that, you know, how is that transition? Uh, um, going for you? it's a beautiful thing to be honest. Um, I always, I never envisioned the person, my partner, or my wife going to a job that is stressful to her, mm-hmm. that, would take her away from me for most of the day where she would spend most of her time there and less time with me. So we all came to this work together conclusion during the COVID period. Mm -hmm. 
So she was actually a school teacher and COVID obviously closed down schools mm -hmm. and she was like panicking a little bit about her next move. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, trust me, if you was to become a trainer, I would see that I would facilitate and make sure that you're, you're good. And it was a little fight, a little back and forth mm -hmm. for the most part, but she listened, she went and got certified. And from there, she was able to tap into a market that I couldn't tap into mm -hmm. because I would have female clients, but at the end of the day, um, most females feel more comfortable training with a woman. Mm -hmm. um, their husbands may feel more comfortable with them training with a woman. Mm -hmm. So that brought a totally different aspect to what I was trying to build. Sure. So, so you, you're able to build more clients now with her. Yes. And I, I assume that your wife loves loves what she's doing. She's in the room, so she's, she's, <laughs> shaking, she's shaking her head, yes. Uh, but it's great, man. I love to see, you know, people that are uh, united in their vision, right? And yeah. especially you as, as, as a man, and you, you found a, a wife who is supportive of what, the vision that you have. Yeah. And so supportive that she wants to work along with you you know i think that's like you can't that's that's priceless right yeah. you, you, that's not that's nothing that you can pay for and i and i think that's that's commendable for you man so i, I want to jump into uh the way that you approach fitness right you, you talked about your holistic approach and working on the weaknesses and stuff uh how, what's what what's your approach like when you when you have a client or, or your, your current clients when you have new clients What's your approach in getting your clients in the best shape that they, they could be in? So I would like to say most clients, especially if they're not like athletic clients or youth clients, if they're just like what we call um, just your everyday Joe, or just, the, just mm -hmm. a person trying to figure out which way to take their fitness, sure. boring works because you have to start them off at a level that's sustainable. Mm -hmm. I see many people come out the gate they hit the pavement running hard and then it fizzles off and they never return or they go hard and then they fall off, they mm -hmm. go hard, then they fall off. So for me, it's just basically giving them things that I know they can accomplish and they'll feel comfortable and feel motivated because they came to the gym mm -hmm. and it wasn't what they thought. They didn't die, their body isn't hurting. So I like to just, the more they, the more they come, I give them enough just to keep them hooked, kind of, yep. you know? So I give them things that I know they'll be successful in. Mm -hmm. So they're like, huh, I could do this. And then I just build upon that. And as they get better, we just progress and we just keep growing. Mm -hmm. So I like to say progress over perfection. So for me, it's just a mindset approach mm -hmm. because you change your mind, you change your life. So nothing changes until your mind changes, yes. guys. So you know, we say it all the time. So yeah. I see a lot of people probably um, thinking how to get started in their fitness journey mm -hmm. and the journey to having a fit body starts with a fit mind. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know the cause for why you're unfit, you're gonna continue to, you're always gonna be unfit. Mm -hmm. No matter how hard you go in the gym, no matter how many days you do in the gym, how many hours you do in the gym, what is the reason why you're unfit? Mm -hmm. That's what you should target first. Mm -hmm. Is that your poor eating habits? Is that sedentary lifestyle? Is that your environment? Is that drugs and alcohol? Is that depression? You have to first find out why your mind is working this way and then you can change your body. Sure, so fitness has evolved over the years, right? Um, you have your traditional way of, of approaching fitness and then you have like the more modernistic way now in, in, in modern times. And I wanna get your take on like how, you, how, how do you view that, right? Because you know I, we have been privileged enough to grow up in the era of like traditional workouts or traditional fitness where like the mindset was like you have to eat chicken chicken breasts <laughs> boil eggs boil egg whites at like that yeah uh you know low carbs uh, a lot of supplements um and lifting heavy in the gym going five times a day yeah every day like going all out no rest like wake up six o'clock in the morning if you're in, in the gym in the morning you lazy you know like yeah this mindset that we've we've grown up uh thinking that this is the way that we should do it to now where it's like it, it's a lot more uh flexible right yeah. and you yeah. it, there's a whole uh, there's other techniques that you could use other types of uh, fitness workouts that people can do. Uh, you know how? Wh what's your what's your view on uh, you know the tr the traditional approach to fitness versus the more modern practice? So I'm all for the more modern practice. Um, I think like again, it's about sustainability mm -hmm. and longevity. Mm -hmm. What could you do for a long time, a long period of time, 
and what can you do consistently for a long period of time mm -hmm. can you consistently see yourself never eating ice cream again never having a piece of cake never having that drink um never having pizza or a burger again in your life and most people that's that's just not realistic nope. so nothing comes without sacrifice but i also feel that you can enjoy but not indulge mm -hmm. so if you're willing to put in the work and have the discipline and figure out a way where you can balance these things you enjoy with the things that you need mm -hmm. i feel like that's the best approach to, to have because you can sustain that over time mm -hmm. so you might need to eat wendy's and a burger every day but you might need that in your life some people are like you have clients that say they'll never give up coke soda but they are still willing to put in the work they're still willing to put in the other hours in the other areas that they need to to enjoy that coke sure. they're, not, they're not just gonna sit back and give up on life and say well if i if i can't have this coke then i might as well not work out i sure. can just stay fat or whatever sure. it is sure sure no that, i think that's i think that's a that's, that's a great mindset right life is all about balance mm -hmm. like you could you could have the wendy's you could have the pizza you could eat the cake the cookies the cupcakes like all of those stuff but just don't overindulge right i tell i tell people all the time like you know is, it makes no sense to force yourself to eat something you don't enjoy because you're not going to sustain it no right it's all about building a lifestyle of you know i'll eat the way i'm supposed to eat say for five six days and then on you know one day out of the week yeah. or one meal out of the week i'll eat whatever i want and you know you create a balance in in that sense now, um, now with that there are people who are that disciplined you have to know who you are and what you're capable of yeah, i know well. i'm not disciplined no, no more. the I average person isn't to not but eat there are people who are <laughs> who enjoy eating a certain way and don't need you know fast food or but you have to look in the mirror and see and say am i that person mm -hmm. or be realistic and set attainable mm -hmm. goals to mm -hmm. say like hey i'm not giving up these foods for life but that doesn't mean i should give up on myself sure you can still achieve a level of fitness um just through sacrifice and and discipline but you have some trainers out there who would uh down their clients for like you know not following the uh, fitness regimen that they built yeah right and i i don't know how sustainable that even that is right because mm -hmm. if me as a client i know i have some uh challenges with you know whether it's my diet or uh, my my motivation or you know the, the the confidence that I need to be in the gym uh, and you as a trainer don't recognize it and try to you know assist me with that then what's the point in us still being you know you being my trainer yeah right there, there has to be a an understanding from a trainer's standpoint to say okay I could work with this like you and you know you start to bargain like you give me this and i'll allow you to do this but you have yeah. to you know and I, I i mean that's just i just feel like that's a good way to approach it uh from a trainer client uh perspective because a lot of the times you have trainers who like just barking at their clients and yeah. saying or oh, and calling them out like when they doing eating bad or ain't doing what they're supposed to do but not realizing like bro this this a human being then as as fit as you may think they are or well, i mean sometimes clients is you know, be slacking and awful or whatever yeah. but for the most part you know it takes time to, yeah it, to take, it takes a, it takes a real approach like you have to learn that's why it's called personal training you have to be personable and learn that everyone is different someone's been eating away for 30 years it's not gonna just change the way they eat in, in yeah, two weeks yeah. so you have to be realistic although you will want them to do that as a client as a trainer mm -hmm. to get the best results and use it as a marketing pitch and be like hey look what my client was able to achieve but mm -hmm. the reality is they've been eating this way for 20 years 10 years mm -hmm. maybe their whole life so you have to have some leniency and and be and tailor your program towards this individual and understand that they have to kind of relearn or untame their mind sure and then become a, a reinvent themselves is the whole thing and reinvention takes time self-development take time mm -hmm. you cannot just wake up one day and be like I want to be this person that I saw in my head last night. Or I was thinking like, yeah. this person has abs. I want to have abs in the morning. Like it's not gonna happen. Like and then that. When, they don't, when they don't see it in in a month or two, they discourage and be like, oh, forget this workout. Yeah. Working out. And I would like people to realize that this lifestyle is for life. That's why it's called a lifestyle. It's mm -hmm. not for the shirt to fit. It's not for this wedding. It's not to manipulate the scale. It's not to um to like flex for soca or for a beach event or for the boat for a season 
it's called a lifestyle for a reason because it's your entire life mm -hmm. so that's why you should make sure your program is based on longevity and something you can do from now until you're 60 until you're 70 so i agree with the high cardio intensity approach mm -hmm. um i actually want to offer boot camp classes too in the mornings mm -hmm. just to build a community and i kind of miss that um camaraderie and and just having people around in group settings but i also know that for the most part that aspect of training is not sustainable like there are not many 60 year olds that can do burpees or you know jump up and down or slam their bodies on the ground <laughs> or do too, too many high intensity things but what they can do is strength train what they can do is is walk they can work on their core strength mm -hmm. they can work on their mobility their flexibility as well as um increasing like you say the holistic approach mm -hmm. keeping their mind sharp through what they eat and just rest recovery and nutrition so the main thing is you should really focus on what your client is doing outside of the gym because you're with them maybe eight hours in a month maybe 12 and the other times they're with them they're with themselves mm -hmm. so they have to understand how to be their personal trainer when you're not around. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what you should really teach them is like discipline. Yeah, you're basically preparing them to not need you, not need but you, to right. still want you. Right. And that takes discipline. Yes. Yeah. Just building it in your own time. Not as that's good, man. That's good. So I, I want to tackle some some uh, some fitness myths. All right. right? So uh, no pain, no gain. You know, we all heard and are familiar with this 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 uh, this cliche statement you know no pain if you ain't if you ain't feeling the pain you ain't gonna get the gain or whatever I, you know it, to a certain extent it's true yeah but i don't know if i holistically believe that anymore right because i do feel like um we have to allow our we have to listen to our bodies and and you know what our body when our bodies tell us it needs rest like we have to rest if it's if it's too much pain if it's too painful you know like that's that that that's a sign that your body is trying to communicate something to you, right? Yeah. Uh, what's your view on on that no pain, no gain view? Um, I would much I would rather it be no sacrifice, no gain, mm. because there's different ways to experience pain. It mm. doesn't have to be physical, like beat down pain, but just you know maybe canceling that party or maybe not having that drink or maybe not indulging in drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. That that's a form of sacrifice. So basically, what did it cost you to get these gains mm -hmm. other than just pounding the pavement, beating your body down? Because often there are many people that work hard and still accomplish nothing. Right. So it's not just about hard work. Right. Um, people work more hours and still don't make more money. Yep. So it's not just an aspect of being busy, go, going super hard being, and being yeah, busy. Like yeah. you can run, you can run fast, but you could also be running fast in place. Yeah and going nowhere yeah. so if you're just taking that aspect of i go into the gym and i'm just gonna beat myself down and drag myself out the gym and i feel satisfied because <laughs> i've sweat and i my legs hurt and all of this but you still have to look at yourself in the mirror and say did i get better today mm. where was i this time last year or last month and where am i now yeah i think that's a perfect perspective measure yourself versus yourself right your old self and you should always be the, the goal should always be to be better than you were yesterday, last week, last month, last year, right? Uh, the next thing, the next one is, um, you know, the more exercise I do, the better result, the better the results are gonna be. Um, which means like, you know, you got this, this old trend, I don't know if it's a popular trend still, but you know, people used to do two a days. Yeah. Like go in the gym in the mornings, go to the gym in the evenings, cause I need to, you know, I need to work my body hard enough so that I could get the results that I want. What's your view on that? So I recently spoke to this guy that I've been seeing in the gym for years and he's someone I look up to um, and he just, great physique. And he just told me one day, he's like, man, it's 99% nutrition and 1% gym. Mm. So just, just using it as an illustration, it's basically you have to match your recovery, your hydration, your nutrition with what you do inside the gym. Everyone wants to go in the gym and lift weights and get a good pump, but what are you doing to um, ensure that you get those gains? So for example, when you go into the gym, you actually break down your muscle fibers. Mm -hmm. So the gym is where you strip your body, you break everything down. Mm -hmm. Where you get gains is nutrition, mm -hmm. recovery, and hydration. Mm -hmm. So it's often you can see people that's been gymming for years that go every day, twice a day, and still may not yield results because 
their recovery does not match their work ethic. Intensity, yep, yep. So it's just like making money and not understanding how to save and yep. how to invest. Yep. So yeah, they know how to make money, but they don't know how to save, they don't know how to reinvest, they don't know how to put their their hard work to use mm-hmm. or their money to use to make more money for them. This boy's spinning so, over here, all right? Yeah, yeah. Check dog, okay, ready to go. I like that, boy. I like, I like the analogy yeah. with, with, with people could make money but don't know how to save it, because it's true. Yeah. Anyone could go in the gym and lift a bunch of weight and, you know, at the end of the day, you still not see the gains that you really want to see because you're not resting, you ain't eating properly, and you know doing all the things yeah, you mentioned, the extra things. Uh, and then, so since we're talking about nutrition, then uh, you know we there's this supplements industry where you could supplement your body with protein, creatine, you know these uh, uh, adrenaline that you need to be in the gym. Um, what they call it again? Uh, like energy drinks. And yeah, energy drinks. C four. You know yeah. these these, these these I just call them drugs. These drugs <laughs> would as I view like having have having jitters, bro. Like I remember the first time I take C four, I I went to the gym, work out fine, left the gym, went to work, sitting up my desk, my body was shaking. I talking about yeah. shaking uncontrollably and I was like, I am never taking C four again. Yeah. What, what, what's your view on supplements? Um it comes back down to it's false energy for me. It comes back down to nutrition. Your, your nutrition. Yep the way you sleep, the way you recover. It's a reason why you're tired. So the reason you're buying this energy drink or this supplement to increase your energy is because you're probably lacking some sort of, uh, you're lacking in your nutrition. So your body should, your body is basically produces, uses food to produce energy. Mm -hmm. There are animals, there are other beings that do not take Mm -hmm. a false source of energy to function. So you have to evaluate the real reason why you need this to perform, So, which is usually a poor diet. Mm-hmm. So the same thing is with coffee. I'm not knocking coffee. Some people um, drink it for a beverage of choice that they enjoy, and some people are now fully dependent on it and cannot survive without it. They need it for energy. They use it for pre-workout too. For pre-workout. Yeah. They they feel like their day isn't, they can't start their day and until they have it. Coffee, yeah. And yeah. I feel like if you enjoy it, it's one thing, but if you're dependent on it, if you're dependent on C4 to perform, maybe you need to reevaluate mm-hmm. um, why your energy is so low. Maybe mm-hmm. you need to get more rest. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to add um, a better diet regimen. Maybe you need to eat a more balanced breakfast. Um, whatever it is you need to evaluate before you just mask it with false sources of energies because those things take you up and then they bring you down absolutely and so then when you stop taking them you lose whatever gains you had had gain had made you know and, and then back to them. back to what i was saying with sustainability and longevity mm-hmm. how long do you plan on taking and drinking these energy drinks yep. before your workout like i've known people that make workouts six to seven days a week and they drink an energy drink before every workout mm-hmm. you calculate that for 20 years mm-hmm. Like, what is that doing to your body? What mm-hmm. is that doing to your pancreas? Mm-hmm. You're just spiking insulin into your body, um, which then if you don't have a lot of muscle, it's mm-hmm. gonna be stored in your fat cells mm-hmm. or in your liver. So, and we all have a finite amount of insulin if people don't know. Mm-hmm. So that's why type two, di- type two diabetes is so prevalent it's because yep. you, and it's so crazy that type two is you're not born with it. Like you have to Develop work that. hard to get type two diabetes. You People gotta don't understand that. Literally eat bad. No, you have to, to get th- type two diabetes. Yeah. That's crazy. And that so these crazy. all of these things along with sodas and, and just poor diet habits yep. lead to um type two diabetes, which mm-hmm. is very common in, mm-hmm. in our region and mm-hmm. in the world at this point, mm-hmm. just due to uh the increase of processed foods and beverages and yep. things like that. So what's your view? Because you know, and t- talking about another myth, I already know that we talked about this already, but I just think this is always funny to me. You have these clients, mostly uh, female clients, not knocking, you know, the female clients out there. This, yeah. You know, just something that prevalent, pre- prevalently comes up with females. Yeah. They come to the train and be like, you know, how do I lose this right here? Yeah. yeah. This section I, of my body right here. I, like I, this. I, <laughs> to be honest, it's not even females <laughs> not at this oh, point. Oh, men too? Yeah. They just want to lose this. I like, okay. oh, I, I like my arms. I like my arms and my legs. I just want to lose this. What right workout now. I could do to lose this? <laughs> it's no, it's no secret workout. It's no amount of ab crunches you can do. Yeah. Um, you cannot spot reduce. Your body works as one. Mm-hmm. Um, you lose fat 
overall you don't you don't just lose fat in, in one, one area, area yeah. although you can you can um build muscle in yep. these areas through exercises it's impossible to just pick one one area of your that like your body's not gonna just be like all right we just want to lose weight in in the ab section today your mm -hmm. body is not wired like that so you have to reduce your overall body fat and then you can enhance those areas through strength training so let's say if you lower your body fat and then you perform rigorous uh, ab exercises and be consistent with it mm -hmm. then you can build like you know the the muscles that the muscles that you would want mm -hmm. in your ab section but to say like you do 50 crunches or 100 crunches every day and then you're gonna have abs is don't work like that no <laughs> if it did everyone would have abs. everyone would have abs yes. for real yeah <laughs> so so what's your regimen like like what, what what do you what do you do personally um you know to keep yourself in shape and, and i'm talking like straight across the board like your 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 fitness your, your nutrition mm -hmm. any supp supplements that you might take like what's the, the rest that you do um but what would like from walk me through a day with with your uh, your fitness regimen so i've been i would say recently within the last few months i've been trying to eliminate most processed foods mm -hmm. So that's whey protein. I don't take whey protein. I don't take um, energy drinks. I don't drink coffee. Uh, for me, I'm just trying to figure out what what can I sustain my life with that I know something that I can sustain every day of my life with. So mm -hmm. basically, I just wake up in the morning. I normally do fasted workouts. So I work out early in the morning, usually by myself. I've been working out by myself for years now. I feel like you have enough motivation and enough um, things that, that you need to accomplish to, to motivate yourself and to be disciplined, mm -hmm. to work out alone. And it's a good time to just reflect and and remember your why and why you're here. Sometimes you can get caught up working up with someone, either competing or just talking or, you know. So back to your point was mm -hmm. basically, I just eat, I work out fasted, um, then I would just eat whole foods and try to find the best regimen for for me and my my lifestyle. So I'm pretty active. I uh, I have clients in the morning. I teach physical education at a high school, and then I also train clients in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I've been basically testing to see how I could sustain my high energy through all these activities, and I've just been doing it with whole foods. Uh, I don't drink sodas. Uh, coconut water is my drink of choice. No juice, no nothing. No, no juice. Um, Technic juice is just sugar, man. It ain't nothing. N in natural that. juice. I'm talking. Like you don't juice your own. Food yeah, like whatever. yeah, like watermelon. Okay, yeah, okay. things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I'll do that. But like, just juice, sodas, things like that. You know, I try to stay away from it because, like I say, that again spikes your insulin, and then you crash down later in the day. So, for me, it's just basically waking up, working out, and then for the rest of the day, basically trying to. Uh, fuel my body through whole foods like eggs, avocados, um, chicken, uh, steak, mm -hmm. fish, things like that, um, quinoa, vegetables, everything like that. I just try to figure out what I can do for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and what is reasonable and what I can sustain. And how's that been working for you so far? Um, it's the best I've ever felt. I'll be 34 tomorrow. I have a lot of kids and people in the gym that think i'm 25 and i embrace that and they say man you look good they don't believe that they always try to compete with me and i i hang i i kind of hold my own with them and then i ask them their age and they're like 70 and i'm like i'm 33 hey and they be like Just what? remember remember now age <laughs> for the time don't play that yeah. don't, that don't, you know what i mean so yeah but i i felt to be honest nah, I, I feel, feel that's good huh? i feel young you don't yeah. feel your age so i feel better now than i did at 17 just telling you about my story and yep. how I was lacking confidence yep. and always sick in and out of the hospital, um, afraid to go anywhere without my asthma pump, afraid during games that I'd have a you asthma have, attack. You still have asthma now? Actually, the, that's kind of how this all came to fruition as well. The more I exercise and the more, the stronger I get, mm -hmm. the less. The less you need, you, you dependent on the pump. Yeah, so yeah. I, I haven't had one for about seven years now okay. and that was a goal of mine to like not go get a prescription for mm -hmm. it to 
to take that fare away. Mm -hmm. So I would like travel in things like that. I would be petrified to not have that. I'd be afraid that I might just have one and have a have an asthma attack on the plane mm -hmm. or like doing something important. So now for me, I noticed the stronger my body got, the better I ate, mm -hmm. the less I needed it. Well, that's good, man. I, I I think you know just showing how you're 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 saying that the are your fitness regimen has, first of all, removed any dependence on an asthma pump, right? You're feeling the best you've ever felt, uh, more better than you felt as a teenager. Um, and it all, it all has to do with your nutrition and, you know, the lifestyle that you're building. Yeah, not, taking, not, taking control, taking right. control, because it's, it's no one to blame. I never want anyone to feel sorry for me. Mm -hmm. So my close friends and family would know these things about me, but mm -hmm. I would never tell my friends or people at school mm -hmm. that this was all people I play sports but I would never want them to feel sorry for me mm -hmm. I'm sure they wouldn't have anyway so it wasn't even something to to bring up yeah but just to realize that I took control of my life and it actually um, led to the place that I want to go yeah and I'm still chasing this vision of how I see myself in my head I'm never satisfied I don't think I've even reach 25 percent of my potential yet mm -hmm. i'm still learning mm -hmm. and that's another thing i want to express to trainers is that it's okay to be in the learning stage like i want to learn for about 10 years before i consider myself an expert mm -hmm. so i still stress to my clients that i'm growing with them i don't feel like i know everything mm -hmm. i don't want you to think like i'm the god of fitness and i can just tell you to do these things and you become this super fit individual mm -hmm. like i'm still learning this is still new to me like post COVID, I would say my career really started. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would advise trainers to understand that you don't have to feel like you know it all just yet. It's okay to learn your first five to 10 years should be you learning mm -hmm. and understanding the industry and understanding nutrition and calories and exercises and just evolving with the times because fitness is forever evolving. It's now very much fused with technology. Mm -hmm. So go and re-educate yourself, take some of the money you're getting from your clients, put it back into your education, go to seminars, travel to other gyms, speak to other trainers, like, you know, it, just continue to grow and don't feel like, man, I'm making money, I know what to do, I know how to get people to lose some pounds, and that's- I ain't gotta learn no more. No, yeah. and that's, that's the majority of, of people, in my opinion, from what I've seen, that's the majority of trainers here. There are some great ones who continue to um, expand and, and grow and change the game, mm -hmm. and I commend them. But there's a lot that just feel like they're just in it for the money because we're still ignorant with within the terms of fitness, yep. and it's still pretty much to the bottom. Food and beverage, I would say, is at the top. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people play on that the fact that a lot of people are ignorant and they just work them hard and they make them sweat and they feel like, oh, you know, I had a good workout. I, this yeah. one, this trainer has killed me. <laughs> oh boy, you go in too soft for me. And it's like, miss, you just say you have a bad back yeah. and bad knees. <laughs> Why would I put a hundred pounds on your back and kill you? Yeah. And and then you f you'll feel accomplished then. If I put a bunch of weight on you and you throw at your back. Cause it's that no pain, no gain mentality, bro. So, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah so yeah. that's that's my thought on that. No, I got you. So so you know, two two last questions. The first is where are you where do you see yourself in uh, another ten years, fifteen years, twenty years? Um, I see myself as I want to be able to first. I want to be able to empower uh, the youth and make them so. Like I said, I know what it's like to not feel confident. I know what it's like to not have someone to tell you where to start there are many kids here with ambition and drive but they just don't know where to start or what's step one for them mm -hmm. so that's always been a goal to be the person i was looking for back then so i wish i had someone to tell me like you know if you put in the work if you eat better if you were to exercise work and your flexibility if you were to um become smarter if you were to take a more logical approach to becoming a man early versus like you know they just tell you just you can figure it out when you get older mm -hmm. but i wish i wish i had someone like me to tell so i always tell young kids like start dreaming start believing in yourself now like, now if you were 17 uh -huh. and your 37 year old self tell your your 17 year old self 17 year old self this you think your 17 year old self would have listened yeah to be honest because like i said i was looking for that okay but 
it's hard to go up to someone and ask them to give you knowledge. Gotcha. They either do it or they don't. Yep, yep. Everyone isn't a mentor. Everyone isn't a role model. Everyone don't want to give you the, the secret sauce or give you the keys to becoming better than them or more successful than them. Mm-hmm. But me, I feel like if I could, if I could find or make, create one person like that in this lifetime, I feel like that'll be an accomplishment. If someone yeah. listens to me and I can see like, hey, he listened to what I said and this brought him to, even if he's better than me, even if he's more athletic, whatever it is, I feel like that's the goal and that's my purpose in life is to um, just be that role model and help people to reinvent themselves and, and advocate for lifestyle changes. But you prefer like it to be more on them than on you encouraging them though. Like sometimes like you want people to take the onus on themselves. Yeah. Right. Not always to have to have uh, the trainer or another individual like telling them like I'm, I, I would hope that you would want them to you know take what you're, you're telling them take what you're teaching them but instill that in themselves and like you say create a lifestyle yeah right? Right. De- uh, definitely and that's and just to go off what you were asking for me I feel like it's better targeting youth like of course I want to help a wide variety of people but I feel like young people have less like they say you can't teach old dog new tricks mm-hmm. so older people kind of stuck in their ways they kind of built these habits over time and it's hard for them to break i feel like a lot of young people only know what they know Mm. so if you show them a different especially if you can show them that you're living this lifestyle and that they can see it like they see you're just telling them yeah they see the way i carry myself they see my wife they ask me questions all the time they get my phone number they whatsapp me Mm -hmm. so it's more of don't do what i say but more do what i do Mm -hmm. so I would tell them, but I'll also do it and they can actually see it and, and see the benefits of it. So I really I really want to um, help the youth and empower young people. And yeah, I see my brand as being more of growing into this big, I wanna be, I wanna consult. I wanna be like every arena of fitness. I wanna be able to like be an octopus and just have my hand in a variety of things, whether that's um high schools whether that's fitness clubs whether that's just educating people um just holistic approach to to fitness Mm -hmm. so that's what untame is for me it's more than just getting people fit or working people out it's actually i want to be a staple in this fitness industry and be remembered as um a pioneer in the fitness industry for the Bahamas and mm-hmm. the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. That's dope, man. Yeah. So last question. Um, it's a question I ask all the guests that come to the pod. Um, how do you define success? Um, I feel like I know some people might define it through a dollar amount mm-hmm. or your house or your car. But for me, I think if you're doing what you set out to do for yourself every day and accomplishing your goals i see that as a success already so you're successful if if you're providing for your family you're already you're already a a success if you're a good father you're a success if you're a good teacher if you're a good employee if you're a good boss you're a success it's not just based on um external validation Mm -hmm. you have to validate yourself internally and Mm -hmm. i feel like you can become a success based on what you set out to achieve. Not, like I said, not being validated by a dollar amount or things or people saying that, hey boy, you look successful because you drive this car or you wear this type of clothing. Mm -hmm. But just waking up and being happy with the person you are every day, I think makes you successful. No, that's dope, that's dope. Uh, To all you fitness enthusiasts out there, you young kids who uh, aspire to be like like Kale, you you know, be, be what he would have liked to have been at 17, right? Taking this advice and, and putting it to work much earlier than he did, much earlier than all of us did, right? Because, you know, I, I, myself at, at 17, you know, I would have loved to have, you know, the knowledge that I have now or would have loved to have applied the knowledge that, that I have now earlier on in my life. And, and they have so much access to it. That's Too much access. Yeah. And they ain't taking advantage of it, right? Yeah. Um, but now, nah, man, I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, 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 that outlook that you have. Um, so how can people get in, in, in contact with you? You know, people that may want to uh, train with you. Um, 
uh, or be trained by you, uh, whether it's, you know, virtually uh, online or, you know, physically, locally here in the Bahamas, so, how, how they can get in contact with So, you. yeah, so I'm currently building a website that should be out within the next month, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. But um, they can reach out to me on Instagram. That's underscore Sly Fox. Or they can reach out to the fitness page, which is Untamed Performance Training. Um, that would be the easiest way to, to get to me right now. Mm -hmm. uh, working on building a Facebook. Um, just being more open to the community. Like I said, I've been in a learning stage mm -hmm. of my career. So I haven't been trying to take on more than I can handle. Mm -hmm. I really want to uh, gain experience before I open up to the public. But I think it's 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 long overdue now i think i have so much to to offer and i just have to do it and stop overthinking it and get on my head and get in the game sure so sure. that's my next step is to be way more personable and way more open to everyone um i feel like i put in the hours i feel like i have the confidence to now um branch out and just be a pillar of strength for people who might be struggling and you know just be more open to tell my story and mm -hmm. share my views on on this fitness industry yeah man because you, you you could encourage a lot of people with, with with that story yeah right the the growth that you had the journey that you had you know the more you tell it the more you're going to inspire and you know you'll be surprised what you'll be able to do for your brand you yeah. know just by talking about it um so appreciate that man. Thank yeah, man. You. thanks thank for you. having me i appreciate you no, my pleasure yeah man so that brings us to the part of the poor way i want to leave with you a milestone milestone today is is simple right fitness is a lifestyle there's no finish line Right, so don't think of, fish, of, of fitness as I'm gonna. I have this goal of I want to uh, look good for next summer. I want to look good for this this wedding that's coming up. I want to fit in this suit. Uh, think of it as a lifestyle, right? Because fitness is a lifestyle. There should be no finish line, right? The 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 goal and the mindset should be I want to be fitness for. I want to be fit for life, right? I want to be able to be around for my kids and my family for as long as I could because I'm uh, placing fitness as a priority for me. All right. So that brings us to the end of the pod. Kayla, thanks again for joining me, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Definitely do this again. I definitely, feel, definitely got to come back. But the next time I come back, it'll be bigger and even better. Yeah, man. Yes. We, we might even be able to do it at the, 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 the uh, untamed. No, I trying to, I trying <laughs> to fix the. What's the name? Um, uh, like the type of training facility that you have when it's like bar none like it's the it's the most the mecca the that ain't it anyway i draw on a blank right now but it's fine. as always the, the the goal and vision of this pod is to entertain educate and elevate you mi miles high above your fears your doubts and any limitations that you may think exist always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind all right so until next time you guys stay blessed <laughs>